Hello, thanks very much for watching. I know I'm not on a towpath today. I'm at the opticians getting some new glasses. Yeah, I think these are the ones. Every time I've driven past this section of the River Saw, I've always thought I'd love to moor up at this spot. And this time I have. It's really, really quiet. There's a little bit of traffic from the A453, but down on the water side, it's really, really silent. In fact, it's so silent the first night I stayed here, there wasn't a sound anywhere. And I woke up in the middle of the night wondering what on earth was going on. There's enough space for two boats here if you moor considerately. Some people will just moor right in the middle and stop another boat um, being able to fit in. I, on the other hand, have moored right to the very, very end. And on one of the nights, someone did actually moor right in front of me. It was only a higher boat, so they were only there for the one night. There's no one around really. It's really, really nice and peaceful. The closest village will be Kegworth and it's just north of um, Kegworth Floodlock. I'll put a link in the description below for the GPS coordinates of this spot because it's, it's well worth a visit. I want to get back to sort of Swarkston area today because I've got an appointment to meet some people on Monday morning and I want a bit of an easy weekend to be honest. This is great. I don't have to do anything. The, the sheer flow of the river saw going that way is pushing the nose of Alice around. So I'm just letting it go. Just going under the A453, it's a dual carriageway which is like a bit of a busy highway and it joins the M1 motorway with Nottingham. Now I have driven up and down this road thousands of times and it's always a really nice feeling to go underneath it. Leaving the A453 behind, I travel north through Red Hill Marina. Just after the marina is Red Hill Lock. Now this is a flood lock and it does close as soon as the river floods. So make sure you check that before you travel. I then turn onto a wide expanse of water at Thrupton Weir. This is where the River Saw meets the River Trent, the Erewash Canal and the Cranfleet Cut. I will be heading west on the River Trent. Sawley Cut is quite a protected part of the river and to the north there's lots and lots of mooring and to the south it's full of residential mooring and Sawley Marina. Then back out onto the River Trent where it meets the mouth of the River Derwent. This is now the start of the Trenton Mersey Canal. I then travel through the village of Shardlow and to the south of Aston-on-Trent and Western-on-Trent and hopefully I will moor up just before Swarkston. This view here gets me every time. Big cooling towers sticking up out of the ground. I wonder how long ago this lock used to be in action. It's clearly a lock, but it's quite a lot higher than the other one.
it's always really nice sharing wide locks like this with people like Mick and Polly who are our viewers, hello to you. The boat doesn't move around as much in the lock and it's a lot more controlled and you can open the paddles fully and there's no risk of, of the boat going bashing into the sides. Blimey, you've got to be careful when coming through Red Hill Marina because the wind pushes the boat towards these moored boats from off the fields. Um, I nearly had an incident then but I was able to recover the, the stern of the boat and swing it round. See it's quite windy. I remember almost two years ago when travelling north on the River Severn with another grey narrowboat, Andy and Carolyn. Well they've just bought a Dutch barge and this is it. I just had a, a viewer in the boat behind me there shouting across to me, Jono have you not finished that boat yet? No not really. Around the corner here on the Trent there's a boat that's doing some quite wild maneuvers. Now there is a wider space just around the corner where they could turn around so I've got a feeling they are on a helmsman course and the helmsman trainer is putting them through their paces. Yes I was right there was a helmsman on board and the two owners of the boat were required to turn around in the middle of the river. Now going on a Halsman course is really really good. Um, I went on one, a two day course before I got Alice. I wanted to make sure that I could control a boat on my own. I wanted to make sure that Molly was okay on boats. And I did the two day course, I hired the boat as well as the Halsman. You can either do that or get the helmsman to come onto your own boat, but I did it the other way around because I didn't have Alice at that point. And I found it really, really valuable. There was lots and lots of training through locks, what to do, what not to do, what to look out for, as well as man overboard, as well as turning around in crazy areas like on the river, um, just like this. That's why I thought it might be a helmsman training as well as mooring up and just solo navigating for me. Obviously the training would be customised to your needs. I don't think it was a waste of money in the slightest. I hear lots of people say, oh it's a waste of money because it was about £200 a day if I remember correctly, about just over two and a half years ago. Just waiting for the other boat to come and join me in the lock to make sure that I'm over to one side I've put my center line up around a bollard and I'm holding on to it I can pull the boat backwards and forwards with this and it keeps me solid against the wall How strange is that? I'm at Sawley Marina. I've stopped off to get some fuel. 
and they wanted me to fill in a form online and they've given me a special fuel card only to be able to dispense fuel. They can't give me the fuel unless I've done that, which is really strange. It's the first time I've ever experienced it. Now, to be fair to Sully Marina, they are a very, very busy marina and the lady behind the counter said that um, they had a, an inspection from the HMRC and they advised them to go down this route purely because of the amount of fuel that they were dispensing and it was for their own benefit but I've never had it before um, it's fine it doesn't cost anything but um, it just sort of ticks all the boxes with the law and declaration of VAT I'm full of fuel now and I'm just about to go to a tap up at Swarkston and fill it with water and get rid of any rubbish I've, I've got on board. It's such a nice feeling to have full water tank, full diesel tank, empty bins and empty toilet. It's getting really quite windy now. I'm now in what's called buddying up mode. When you meet other people that are also going in the same direction as you, you obviously you've got to go through the same locks. And they have closed the gates for that lock and I'm going to go ahead and prepare the next lock ready for us to go through and we sort of leapfrog. It's quite a nice way of dealing with it and because they're all broad wide locks here, it's nice and easy to go up in them. I think they're going to be mooring in a very similar sort of place for, as me as well. So that's what's called buddying up. When you buddy up with another boater and go on a journey together through a series of locks, it's great. There's two pubs here, Malt Shovel and New Inn, and the smell in the air of freshly cooked chips is unbearable. Now, obviously, I haven't had any chips since, what, January? Because I'm on the keto diet, where I'm not allowed chips or carbohydrates or potatoes and things. And smelling this in the air is really, really difficult. Aston Lock is a really nice mooring along here. The only problem is, is dogs running past me, that was Molly, but also just on the other side of this hedge, really early in the morning, is there's a quarry and the lorries go up and down, up and down. So there's lots of rumbling and it sort of resonates through the water. But if you're fine with that, it's a lovely place to moor up.
I'm moored up just before Swarkston now, out for a late evening walk with Molly. I absolutely love this mooring spot. It's really quiet at night, lovely fields all around. There is a little bridge here which you can go through a field and park up by the main road. But I haven't got my car with me today. I always stop at this bit whenever I come past. It's so regular um, because this has got armco and there's lots of weeds and grass growing over the armco. Where I dug it out the first time, probably two years ago, there's a little bit of a uh, grass missing so you can get my chains down behind the armco. Exactly the same spot, they're still there obviously. And it's such a nice place to, to relax after a long day's cruising. You also get really good Wi-Fi here. Um, I'll put a link to this exact location um, in the description below as a GPS coordinates. And Molly and I are gonna carry on with this walk. So until next time, I'll see you later.